Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. SpaceX successfully tests Dragon Escape System. FAA has underwhelming news at Unmanned Systems 2015 conference. Blue Angels names new commanding officer. I'm Brie Cross, it is May 7th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. We have some great news for those who are following the race to space through private industry companies. Yesterday morning, Elon Musk and his SpaceX company completed a critically important test of the escape system for manned flights in the SpaceX Dragon capsule. Early reports indicate this first unmanned test was a success. The main goal for the flight was to get a feel for how the vehicle would respond if it and the crew needed to separate from the main booster rocket in a hurry. The Dragon capsule contains internal rockets that can fire in a split second and pull away from any danger. Once clear of the primary boosters, the Dragon capsule makes a parachute-controlled descent back to terra firma. While this escape system uses a similar concept to that used on NASA's Mercury and Apollo space capsules, it has far greater capabilities. NASA's original escape design used a rocket tower attached to a space capsule for escape during the launch phase only. The SpaceX escape rockets are part of the capsule and are capable of protecting the crew from liftoff to orbit. It's exciting to see the U.S. space program returning to the capability of manned spaceflight. The ANN News crew attended the Unmanned Systems 2015 conference in Atlanta, Georgia this week, where we anxiously awaited the FAA scheduled presentation. We had hoped of hearing about further progress in implementing rules to promote UAS operation and we were slightly underwhelmed. They opened by announcing a program called Pathfinder, which we heard would allow beyond line of sight operation for certain UAS functions. As it turned out, Pathfinder is an approval for three private companies to experiment with expanded use of UAS devices. A couple of these companies have been given permission to go beyond line of sight as it relates to their specific operation. There appears to be no major change in the FAA's attitude about beyond line of sight operation as proposed in their regulations. They also announced a cool iPad app to complement their Before You Fly program. Basically, it looks at your location and tells you if it's okay to fly a UAS based on airspace restrictions. This app is being released on a test basis only at the present time. After the break, leader for the Blue Angels 2016 and 2017 schedules is named. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The U.S. Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, the Blue Angels, have announced the name of the commanding officer for the 2016-2017 seasons. A selection panel comprised of 10 admirals and former commanding officers, selected Commander Ryan Bernacki to succeed Captain Tom Frosch. The selection panel leader, Rear Admiral Roy Kelly, said, quote, We prioritize selecting an officer who is an outstanding example of the pride and professionalism of the Navy and Marine Corps. Commander Bernacki has a proven record of excellence and will both be a strong flight leader and commanding officer for the 2016 team, unquote. As the Blue Angels commanding officer, Bernacki will lead a squadron of 130 personnel and serve as a demonstration flight leader flying the number one jet. The Blue Angels are scheduled to perform 69 shows in 36 locations for its 2016 season. We commend Commander Bernacki for his selection and we look forward to seeing the Blue Angels perform in the upcoming season. It's Thursday, which means it's time for an Aero Community Update. 
highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. This week, we would like to honor the Academy of Model Aeronautics, known to all of us as the AMA. Founded in 1936, the AMA is the official national body for model aviation in the United States. They represent more than 170,000 members that participate in modeling hobbies that range from hand launch gliders to model rocketry to radio-controlled aircraft. The AMA sanctions more than 2,000 model competitions throughout the country each year, and their promotion of STEM-related educational projects provide a guiding light for young Americans to see the opportunities provided in aviation and aerospace. As one of the oldest formalized aviation associations in the United States, the AMA forms the very foundation of all organizations that have since been formed to promote and protect our endeavors in recreational aviation. We at ANN are proud to have the AMA as part of the Airborne Partnership Initiative team. After these messages, Herzl has replacement alternator for new and old aircraft. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Now certified, Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100, and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Is it time to upgrade your old alternator? Hartzell Engine Technologies announced that the company has received a PMA for its ANG series of alternators. Their ASG alternators can be used on original equipment or to replace older Ford units. A popular seaplane company located on the Hobart Tasmania waterfront in Australia has taken its last flight. Tasmanian Air Adventures voluntarily entered liquidation. The will to continue is there, but the bank account said no. Textron Systems Support Solutions has introduced a new Unmanned Systems Training Course Catalog. Textron Systems has developed proven curricula, including both classroom and hands-on training elements, utilizing customized materials and training aids to provide a holistic experience. ISS Espresso, the first capsule espresso coffee machine for use in space, is in operation on the International Space Station. It's another space first with the downing of the first cup of space brewed espresso coffee. Now we're ready for Mars. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. When Boulder District Court Judge Judith Labuda was scheduled to hear closing arguments in a lawsuit that claims a skydiving company's airplane makes too much noise and fly too frequently over residential neighborhoods, she journeyed to the neighborhood to hear and see for herself. It is reported that the representatives of the skydiving company were also present, as were a court stenographer and attorneys from the various parties to the suit. According to the newspaper account, the sound from the twin otter airplane was not much louder than leaves rustling on nearby trees. The plaintiffs in this case claimed the airplanes had altered their course of flight to keep the sound levels down, while the skydiving operator said they were simply flying in their typical traffic pattern. We guess the judge will just have to judge this one for herself. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. 
Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.